Thank you, Sammy. Do you like that? Yeah. That's a pretty song. I like that song. Home, sweet home, where we'll never roam. You know, on homecoming day, um, the first year that we were here, uh, Brother Roger did something on homecoming day that I understand was just a regular part of homecoming. And that was to tell the history of the church, the beginning, and how all of this got started. And you know, all of this didn't just happen. It was a process. It was God doing the work. It was God laying the foundation. It was God in his providence working things out for all of this to happen. But God uses people. 
And uh, God has used a great number of people down through the years uh, in this ministry at Welcome Door Baptist Church. Today, uh, when, I, when I got here, uh, Brother Roger told me, he said, now, I want you to tell the history of the church. I said, I, I think you ought to do it. He said, no, I want, I want you to do it. And so I did that. But today is a special day. And since it's our 50th anniversary today, I think it's really fitting that we let our founding pastor tell us the history of this place one more time. And what I want to do this morning by the help of the Lord is not so much biblical preaching, but I want to go back a ways into the history of Welcome Door Baptist Church. I want us to look at it from the time that I became the pastor be 31 years ago this September. I want to go back to the mission and I want to go back to uh, the old past. And I want us to see what God has done and how God has blessed. And I want us to see why. And I want us to stay in those paths. You see, go back with me just a little while this morning. And we would begin with a little mission on Graves Street in Kernersville. Just a little block building, a one room little block building it had a flat roof and every time it rained we'd have to take in our buckets and mop the water out of the floor because it leaked for the heat we had an oil circulator there about in the middle of it and that's how we had our heat uh, the pews were not padded by the way in fact, some of them, if you sit there, it'd take you several days to get over your little adventure. <laughs> they were rough. And, uh, and sometimes you might get pinched if you, when you sit because a board might pinch you. And so there was no luxury. Uh, there was no air condition. There was no inside facilities. And I believe, you know, in other words, for good old country people, we had an outhouse. I believe you can understand that. And uh, we would take and put up a curtain to divide that one room for the two Sunday school classes that we would have. Truly, God's been good to Welcome Door Baptist Church. It may not look so in the eyes of many people. But to me, God has been good to us. God has really blessed us. I want to look back just a little bit at what I'm terming this morning, our heritage. I want us to look first of all that uh, before there could ever be this, there had to be a group of people that had faith to attempt. You understand what I'm saying? Faith without works is dead. There had to be a small group of people which we had five people. And we had seven dollars offering the first Sunday uh, that I went in. But through that, there was a few that had enough faith to attempt to do something for the Lord. Boy, I've heard churches in our day and time, except they have all the money they need, they'll never attempt to do anything. But I want to know and let you know that the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so I believe that it takes faith. And I believe for this church to go further, it's still going to have to have some people 
that has faith to attempt to even do greater things for the Lord. So now you know what it was like when we started. Old rough benches, an old leaky roof, seven people attending and $5 offering. But you know, I'm reminded whenever I hear him tell that story, how that there were 5,000 people sitting on the hillside one day, not counting the women and children that were hungry for something to eat. And uh, the, the disciples asked the Lord, said, where are we going to get uh, enough to feed this crowd? And we look around about us today, and we look at these facilities and all that took to bring all of this to pass. And it started with $5, not much. But that crowd Jesus fed that day was fed with just little five little barley loaves and two fishes. But you see, the Lord took it and he blessed it and he gave the increase. I appreciate my predecessor and our founding pastor. I appreciate him taking the time that homecoming day, whatever year that was, it was his 31st anniversary. And he was here 45 years and four months. And so we just wanted to share that little bit with you today. From that $5 and those seven people, the little mission that was started by a man named Coy Nance was started in July of 71, and he died in August. And Brother Roger had been called by Brother Nance to come down and help the mission out while he was sick. And following the leadership of the Holy Spirit, it was Brother Roger Penix that founded Welcome Door Baptist Church, organized it into the church that it is today. The church met on the property at Grave Street for about two years. And in 1973, uh, Brother Roger was able to purchase a piece of property here on Vance Road. And the first building on this property uh, went up, a little block building. The building is still there. It's not white and block anymore. It's brick now. And uh, it's uh, full of flowers and men's prayer areas and different things. But it's the same building. It's still there. And I love to tell people that when they come to visit. They, they say, this is beautiful campus here. And, and I tell them the story. I said, there's three churches on this property. And so from 1973 to 1985, God blessed the church. And it grew and the, the attendance increased. And people were being saved and baptized. And in 1985, the need was presented for a new building. And so the second building, which now has youth fellowship building on it, was built. And boy, I have heard, Brother DeHart, of the days of some, uh, I'm talking about some shelling down the corn camp meetings over there in that building. And I've heard of invitations that went on into the night, people getting right with God at those camp meetings over there in that building. And uh, it was amazing to me here uh, not long ago when we were having this new projector and screen installed, uh, we had scaffolds all up here and we couldn't meet here on a Wednesday night. So we met over in the second building and just the Wednesday night crowd packed it out. I mean, you couldn't hardly move. There were so many people. And from 1985 to 1999, Welcome Door Baptist Church under Brother, Lo Brother Rogers' leadership met in that second building. And in 1999, the ground was broke and the building that you're sitting in today was erected on this property and this has been our place of worship since 1999 and I feel like that and I don't mean this in any kind of an odd way but I really don't feel like I, I'm an I'm, I feel like an outsider looking at the first 50 years I didn't really have any part of the first 50 years of what God has done but I sure want to be a part of the second 50. To follow that vision and let God use him. If you'll remember last year in our memorial video, we said that the, this story that we're telling tonight is not about one man. And it's not. He wouldn't want that. But it's about what God can do through one person who surrenders their life to him. 
And that can be the case for any of you in the auditorium today, is that you can give your heart to God. Let Him save you if you're lost. If you're saved, let Him use you and continue this work on for the glory of God. It's time for the message now. And we're so honored to have what I consider a great friend of this church. I know he prays for this church. And uh, we're just so glad to have him here today to deliver our 50th anniversary message. Brother Richard D. Hart. Amen. Well, it's a real joy to be back home. Amen. Hey. Felt like that. I told, told my wife yesterday was coming in. It's just good to be back home. We love this church. We thank God for it. Thank God for this opportunity to stand here and to stand here today. I count it a real honor. It's a real honor to be saved by God's grace and be among God's people. What a blessing it is. I first came to this church in the first building. It's where, it's where I first started coming. It's where I met Brother Roger. I started preaching in the second building in the 38th, this will be the 38th camp meeting. I was privileged to start it. I've only missed three out of the 38. I preached a revival, one of them. The other than that, my wife's sister had died. Then the other one was last year, and God was Kobe. And I'm the only one that's left that started, started with it. All the rest of them's not tending now. It's just good to be part of this church. And I met Brother Roger the first time over 40 years ago. Me and him became as, as close as any two people could come close to and I thank God for his friendship and I'm glad I know where he's at went by a while ago, yesterday and visited his grave in his wife's grave he's not there amen he's not there he's in a better place and I praise God for that when I left Faith Baptist Church I uh if we'd stayed here, this would be my home church. That's why I was planning on joining. But God's seen something else. And it's good to have my wife with me. And my great grandbaby, we went down, moved back down there to take care of her. It's not easy to be a grandpa and a guide, too. See, a grandpa is supposed to love them and send them home. Right? But when you got them our way, you got to love them and, and discipline too. And so that's not easy. But anyway, we, we good to be there, then be with us. Good to see each one of you here today. It's good to see Brother Rogers' family. We love them, appreciate them. All the church family. Brother Billy, so good to see you today. Brother Brian, I appreciate you letting me come. Proverbs 17, 7 says, A friend loveth all times. Me and Brother Roger was that kind of friend. Brother Roger carried some things that I told him to the grave with him that he never told. Same thing with me. You said, was it sin? No. It was things about the ministry that we shared with one another. Not to be told from nobody else but me and him. And I'm glad he was that kind of friend you could talk to. He founded this word. He founded it on the word of God in John chapter 17, verse 17. As you've seen up your own thing. It's founded on, on the truth. I thank God for that. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Acts. Chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We do appreciate you praying for us. We, we've been, I preach less, I guess, this year now. I have in 44, 48 years of been preaching. Because it's COVID, but God's still been good to us. And we preach several places. And we thank God for that. Every open door, He gives us to preach. And we thank God. I, I found out one thing about retiring. You that's thinking about it. When you retire, bills still come in. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes it seems like twice a month. Amen. All right, in, in Acts chapter 2, start with verse 42. And they continually steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in breaking bread, and praying. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common, and sold their possessions and goods, and parted them to all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily with on accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness of singing's heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added the church daily, as such should be saved. Father, we are grateful for this time that you've allowed us to come and be here and be part of this celebration of the fifth year of this church. God, we have so many good memories of this church. And so many blessings that, God, you blessed us through this church. And I thank you for everything you've done. And, God, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. Thank you, God, today for anything, everything that's going to be done. May you be glorified in all that's done and said. Knowing us with your Holy Spirit of God. Fill us, God. Let us be a blessing and encouragement, God, to the people. And bless this church. Keep your hands up on it, God. May it continue to go forward. Standing for the truth, God. Have your way, God, in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, I've titled the message today, A Great Fundamental Baptist Church. A Great Fundamental Baptist Church. That's what Faith Baptist, I mean, Faith Baptist. You go. Welcome to Old Baptist Church is. Thank God. Thank God for that. It's been founded on the Word of God, and it is a fundamental church. A New Testament church is a lot. Is a living organ made up of baptized believers joined together with a bound of like pr precious faith and is committed and carrying out the commission by the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything short of this is just a, just a club, not a church. We've got a lot of them today. But thank God for churches that's founded on the Word of God. Let's notice three things today about this church, and I believe it's compared this church, first church, and I believe I can compare it to Welcome Door Baptist Church. First of all, it had the right kind of ministry. The right kind of ministry. A church must have the right kind of ministry to, to do the work of God. He said in verse 42, and they continually steadfast in the do apostles' doctrine and fellowshiping and breaking bread and in prayer. Thank God for the doctrine. Thank God for breaking the word of God. Breaking that bread. He may serve preaching the word of God. And then thank God for the opportunity to pray. It takes faith and prayer to build a church. And so we had the right kind of ministry. To have the right kind of ministry, the church must have a upward ministry. Upward ministry. To exalt the Savior. In, in John chapter 12, verse 32 said, And if, he, if, be, if I be lifted up on earth, I'll draw all men to thee. In John chapter 3 and verse 14, he said, As Moses lifted up the servant, so must uh, the Lord be lifted up. And thank God today he's lifted. If you study the book of John chapter 1, I preached a message from here the other day. On it's all about him. If you study the book of 1 John, 20, 27 times the word him mentioned, is mentioned there in that book. 27 times. It's all about him. It's not about how many bus ministries you got, how much buses you got, how many numbers you got, and all the things. And all. It's, it's Christ lifted up. It's Christ glorified. It's Christ first in the church. And I can say today, after 32 years of running revivals here, 33 almost, I believe it's 33. And on 38 years count meeting, in all times I've seen, this church was founded on lifting the name of Jesus Christ up and glorifying him. It wasn't about Brother Roger. Amen. Brother Roger's a great man, but he knowed it wasn't about him. God just used him to do these things, but it's all about Jesus Christ. And whatever we do, 
Well, if we sing, if we teach a Sunday school class, whatever we do, preach, whatever we do, it must all glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. He must be lifted up. Amen. He must be about. When I took Faith Baptist Church uh, 30 something years ago now, that's the first thing I told them. If I'll stay here, I don't matter how many years, and I stay 27 years for the day. And I said, don't matter how long I stay here, if this town don't even know what my name is, it don't matter to me. As long as they know the Savior that I'm serving. It's all about him. And thank God. I even had, Brother Brian, I even had businessmen when I started to leave come and tell me how much they appreciated the work that God allowed me to do. And the, and the atmosphere that I had around them, that they may know that I was a man of God. They, you can't buy that. It may, why? It pays to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And this church had an upward ministry. Secondly, it had, had an inward ministry that, edified, that exhorted and edified. The Bible said over in the book of 1 Corinthians, it tells us there, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20, let all things be done unto edifying. And everything we do should edify and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in, in, uh, in the book of 2 Timothy 4 and verse 2, it says, exhort with all long suffering in doctrine. See, God uses a man of God sometimes to reprove him and rebuke. But thank God for that time he gets to exalt the saints of God. Lift them up and listen to all of us. And listen, that's my main ministry today. It's what God showed me what I need to be doing. He said, you need to be strengthened to remain. Why? Because people need to be lifted up this day and time. They need to be exalted. Now, there's times that they need to be rebuked. Amen. But thank God for that time we can exalt. And God, God's been using me to go in and help churches and preach to the pastors. Pastors need help. And people do. And thank God for this church. That it was that kind of ch a church. Then thirdly, we see the church ministry that evangelizes the sinners. There it said in verse 46, And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat meat with gladness and sing the heart, praising God and having faith with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. See, 4,000 got saved, 5,000 got saved. Now he's adding to it daily. Why? Because that's what God put the church here for. He put it here, first of all, in Acts 1, verse 8 tells us it starts in Jerusalem. That's here. If you look at word Jerusalem, right in the middle of Jerusalem, you ever notice what, it, what them three words are? USA. Right in the middle of Judah. Amen. That's, that's our home field right here. It don't matter how many foreign missionaries we got, if we don't take care of our community here and across our country, uh, we, we, it, it starts there. And then you uh, go on out. Samaritan Judah and Samaritan, all of the gospel. And he said, go on the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. That my house may be sick. And listen to me, church. There's more people lost today. I believe this all in my heart. There's more people lost today than has ever been up on this earth. We got work to do. Hey, listen. Listen, God's not through with us. God's not through with this church. God says, occupy till I come. He stays stay busy. Witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Write them letters. Amen. Send them tracts. Do anything you can to get the gospel out. Why? That's what God's put this church here for. Amen. He puts here to come here today and every Sunday and Wednesday night where you can be fed with the word of God and we'll get on that in a minute, but where you can be edified and lifted up, where you can go on out and do the work that God's got us to do. So this, but thank God, this church has had this kind of ministry. I believe that. I believe it's founded on lifting Jesus up and, thank, and edifying the saints and, and all of that. And then evangelize. I don't know how many missions you know you got. You got a bunch, I know that. And thank God for the, for the church that got the missionary and all the work they're doing down through these years. Listen to me. One of these days, we're going to go to heaven. We don't know, we don't know who all has been saved through this church. Did you know that? But one of these days, you may be seen how, what all this church has done for the glory of God, getting the gospel out. Getting the gospel out. Then secondly, we see it has been the right kind, of, it has to have the right kind of man of God. 
The church has to have the right kind, right kind of man of God. Over in Acts chapter 4, Peter, you know, Peter denied the Lord, was scared to death, denied the Lord, but he got filled with the Holy Ghost of God, and he stood and said, you're the one that crucified him. Amen. Stood bold and preached the word of God. That's what God wants to do. Then they told him there in, in, in chapter 5, don't even speak about Jesus. He said, should we obey a man or God? God or man? We got to obey God. That's the way Brother Roger and that's the way Brother Brian is. Amen. You're going to obey God. Amen. I know, I, I feel like Brother Brian feels the same way. I preached this way. I didn't preach to please people. When I got through preaching, when God said that's good, I'm pleased, I was pleased. Amen. I found this out. I found this out after passing 42 years. You're not going to please everybody. Amen. Man, I thought when I started, you know, a pastor, big old six foot guys, 240 pounds, I'd please everybody. One, one, one woman told her husband, said, my first church told my husband, uh, her husband said, said, he looks like he's looking down at me. He said, honey, he's standing on the stage and he's six foot five. It's the only thing, thing he can do is look down on you. <laughs> Amen. But listen, you're not going to please everybody. The main thing is pleasing God. Amen. And so we see this. To be the right kind of pastor, he must be a call man. Amen. Amen. God's got to call him. Not mama. Amen. God's got to call him. You heard about the little boy out in the, out in the field, picking, uh, working, and the airplane came over and said, GPC. He goes home and said, Mother, God's called me to preach. Said, how you know? Said, that plane come over a while ago and said, uh, GP, GP Christ. He said, it means go preach Christ. He said, she said, you misread that. It said, go pick cotton. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go pick cotton. Amen. But listen, it's got to be called. Called. I listen. I remember when I got saved. I just as plain to me today as it. And I remember when God called me to preach. I was sitting, laying, kneeled down beside my grandmother's bed. I lived with them. I kneeled down praying, asking God. I've been saved two weeks. I was asking God, what we preach and preach. If you got saved, you need to find out what God wants you to do. And I was kneeling down there asking God, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? And boy, just as plain as if you said it to me, it's a preach. What'd you do? I jumped straight up. I said, I can't. But I found this out. I still can't. But the Lord of God, he can. He can. And I'm glad he called me to preach the word of God. I'm glad he called Brother Roger and Brother Brian to preach. God always has a man to step right in and go on and carry the work on. I thank God for that today. Call man. Must be a committed man. Amen. Committed. Boy, if you're not committed, you're not going to do it. Amen. A lot of times, listen to me. A lot of times, the man of God gets the breath knocked out of him. They sing, there's things that hit you sideways. If you're not committed, you're not going to do it. But you've got to be committed. If you're going to carry the work of God out and go on for God. And that's the kind of men of God y'all have had here. And I thank God. I, I thank God I can say that today. That's the kind of man of God you had, Brother Roger and Brother Brian. It's a comedian man. And then he encouraged me. You got some courage. There's times you got to preach some things you don't want to preach. But you got to preach it. Amen. There's, there's some stands sometimes that you don't want to stand. But you got to stand. Let me share this with you. Brother Roger preached on the radio one day. Talking about being called and all this. He's preached on the radio one day. And he's preached on homosexuals. He got a phone call when he went off the air. That boy called him and said, my, pa, my, my pa, uh, pal or my husband or wife, whatever he is, is home to homosexual. said, he got so mad at you while ago, he threw the radio against the wall. He said, we're going to come down and talk to you. And he said, he, and then he said, but big people really intimidate me. He said, are you a big man? He said, I'm a big, big man. So they didn't come, amen. That's where he was. 
Amen. Thank God. Then look at, look at this about the man of God. A example to lead them. Brother Roger and Brother Brian's an example. Amen. To lead the church of God. Look what he tells us over in 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thy example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Thank God. Example. He was example. Let me share this with him. I mean, him felt the same way. I preached all over the country with him. I mean, he has traveled many, many miles and preached. Not one time have I ever heard him preach. Did he ever tore it, tire his church down and say anything bad about his church? Now, he may be having problems in it, but he loved his church. He loved his people. And a man of God will stand up in any congregation or, or, or anywhere preacher fellowship and run his church down. He don't love his church. You know why? You know why I never did do it? I can't hardly tell you about crying. Brother Brian, everything I've got. The automobiles I'm drinking, driving. The suits I got on, clothes I got on. God's people has furnished it. Why would I turn them down? Oh, yeah, we had disagreements sometimes. But I love my people. And Roger did. He was an example to all of them. In 1 Timothy 3, that's what their qualifications is. The man of God's got to be an example. That's why he's got to be the husband of one wife. He's got to be an example. How could you cancel anybody if you've been married before? Amen. And so he gives, he gives all them things to be example. And these men, he's been an example. Then he's educated to learn them. He's educated. Acts 20, 20 verse 28 said this. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourself and to all the flock has made, an, uh, over, has made you overseer to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Then 1 Peter 5, verse 2 said, Feed the flock of God which is among them. Take the oversight thereof, not strangers, but willingly, not filthy lucre, but ready mind. Feed. See, the pastor's number one job. Number one job. Brother Brian's job is not to just to visit the hospitals, visit the communities, visit the widows. No, that's the church's job. Yes, he does it, and he will. But his number one job is to study and study where he can feed the flock of God. Amen. Don't run him to death. Man, my first church, I was visiting their aunts, I was visiting aunts and uncles and, and half-kins and half-brothers and all this. You know what I found out? They wanted me to do all the visits because they didn't go visit them. They didn't go visit their own folks. And, and I, I'd wind up on Saturday night not having a message, have to get in there and try to get a message for Sunday. No, that's not the way it's supposed to be. And I visited, listen, don't take it wrong. But the pastor's number one job, and you can go to the book of Acts chapter 6 and tell you that. That's why he said to deacons aside, amen. And, but anyway, he says to feed the flock of God. Now listen to me. Go out go one day without eating. One day. Without eating, what you gonna do? You gonna get hungry, right? Go two days, you're gonna get more hungry, right? Right? How many meals you mostly eat today? Three times a day, right? How many meals you need to eat spiritually every week? Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Why? That's where you get fed. That's where you get your strength. And God's man is to study. And feed the flock. Amen. And then we see he's to edify the, the, them spiritually. Edify the church spiritually. No, uh, the man of God edifies. Get right man. Look what he said over in the book of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 11. And, and give some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and some teachers. 
for the purifying of the saints, for the work of the ministry of the edifying of the body of Christ. See, he's edifying. Now notice the last thing. First of all, what make, makes it a fundamental church and a good church and why this church has been here. First of all, it's because it had the right ministry. Amen. Second, it had the right man of God. And I want to say without apology, this church has had the right men of God. They've had men of God in here to preach and help them. But they've had pastors and Brother Roger and this, this preacher, and I believe he's, I, I believe God was in it, putting him in here. And you pray that God will just use him. Amen. And thank God and, and just keep on the church going straight on, standing on the fundamentals of God. Listen, when I end this thing up, I want to be right. I want to stand right. I want to live right. And thank God I want, I want to be right when I die. Amen. Thank God. And thank God for it. So we had the right ministry. They had the right men of God. Secondly, or thirdly, it had the right kind of members. The right kind of, it takes all of it. It takes, it takes the message to preach. It takes the man of God. But the man of God can't do it. It's kind of like I coached basketball for 20 years. I took, I touched, took a, when I first started coaching, I took a team that was, had one boy scoring about 40, 50 points a game and getting beat every game. He's scoring 40, 50 points a game and getting beat every game. I took it and got it turned around. And I told him, I said, listen, if you think you can do it all yourself, we'll just let you play the whole game yourself. Right? You'd get all the rebounds. You do all the shooting. You do all the drill. You do it all. No, it takes a team. And we got it turned around. And, and, and at the end, by the end of the season, we was winning every game about every game we played. Why? We was having four men in double figures. Amen? Sharing it. And that's the way it is here. All of us. Listen, every one of you. Every one of you. How many is a member of the church? Every one of you is important. You got a special role in this church to do something for God. Let me say this right quick. This man can win people to God, but there's people that he can't win that you can win. So we need to all be doing our job. Stuff. So the right kind of members, and I'll give it to you quickly. Look in verse, uh, verse 44 and 40 through 47. And they all that believed were together and all things come. And think how it is, together. And sold their possessions of goods and parted them from all men, as every man had need. And they continued daily in one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and did eat their meat with gladness and single heart, praising God and have favor with all the people. And the Lord, see, it's the Lord. See, I, I've never won, I've never saved anybody I've witnessed I've sowed the seed but God has to bring in the increase amen and this, this when I was talking about it, it's all about Jesus this guy gave me a and if I called his name you know who he was I won't do it man give me a tape one time this is a great man of God I want you to listen at him I listened at the message is 45 minutes long and it probably wouldn't have been over 20 minutes ago if he take all the eyes out I've done this and I've done this and I've done that. I've done this. I was out on visitation. There's a man working on the car, in under the car, and I got on the creek and went under on, on the car. He never stopped taking nuts off. I want him to God. I don't believe that. Hey, Amen. Listen, when I got on, when I got on the Holy Ghost Division, I was lost. I couldn't take a nut off the car. Hey, Amen. I was under conviction. Hey, Amen. But it's not about I. It's, it's about Christ. About Christ. And it takes all of us. And that's why the church is here. It's took all doing it. First of all, faithful members. The Bible requires us to be quite faithful. Requirement. And not, he said, not for Satan, see me sift together as matter of something. Exhorting one another even more as you see the day approaching. God wants us to be faithful. Now, everybody here cannot teach. Everybody can't preach. Everybody can't do a deacon. Everybody can pray and be faithful. Be faithful. Some of you are still here. 
when I, when I came here in the old building. How many was in the old building? Would you stand right quick? Amen. Praise God. I believe it would give him a hand. Now, I know Brother Sexton's been here all the time because he come over on Noah's Ark. <laughs> Amen. He knows them, people. He knows I love him. My pastor told me a day, said, I speak on ones I love. I said, you must love me a lot. <laughs> Faithful. Thank God. Faithful. Been here all this time. Amen. That's a good report. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. Been faithful. If you just join, turn your heart, you're going to be faithful. That's what it takes. Then it's fruitful members. Fruitful members. I mean, we need to, we need to go out and get bring in fruit. Much fruit. The Bible said in uh, says, uh, John chapter 15, much fruit and more fruit. And then it's field members. They was filled with the Holy Ghost of God. See, this is what this church is about Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. It's a filling station. Right. Amen. I feel my car up uh, in, down in Bristol this, yesterday, Abington. And listen, it's half gone right now. You know what it's doing? It's running it's heading towards empty. What do I have to do? I have to fill it up. And if you don't fill it up, what's going to happen? Boop. I'm, I'm sitting on the side of the road. Same way with you. You go week after week, don't get filled after a while, you're going to run out of steam. Amen. So we need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And then it, fervent, fervent members. You know what that word fervent? He tells us over there to pray fervent. Boy, we need to be praying. Listen, we got so much to pray about today. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your members. Pray for the leaders. It's hard for me to pray for Biden, but I pray for him. And it's hard for me to pray for Pelosi, but I pray for them. Amen. Uh, you know what? I don't like them. But you know why I pray for them? I'm praying for their soul. I don't like their ways, but they got a soul. Let me share this. We was, we was headed to meeting up in Rockville, Illinois, preaching a meeting. About eight of us preachers going up preach a camp meeting. Or seven. We're going through... Part of the north up there, and there's a it was back years of when it's hippies. This old guy had his pack, backpack on, on a little long hair, stand on the side of the road, hitchhiking. One preacher said, You know what that is? Well, one said, That's an old hippie, none said, That's an old bum, not what I was saying. You know what that preacher said? He said, That's a soul dying, going to hell. My daddy was an alcoholic, and I hated alcohol and I hated it so much I hated the ones that drank it and I wouldn't have nothing to do with any of them hardly and I was preaching down to a mission in Chattanooga Tennessee and in a mission everybody was in there was drunk and all I was preaching God said son if it hadn't been for the grace of God you could be sitting right out there tonight and from that day on God turned me around I still hate liquor. I hate sin. But I love souls. They need to get saved by God's grace. But we need to pray for them. Would you do me a favor today? Before you, before you leave this building. Write down two names. Of the people that's lost. Maybe a kin folks. It may be somebody way off. Write their name down. And start praying for them every day. Prior change things. Prior change things. Be fervent prior. Then there was fellowshipping members. That's what he said there. Tells us to fellowship together. And, and no, no, I, I'm ahead. said fellowship members there in, in verse 42. They fellowship together. Then there was following members. They followed the Lord. And they followed God's man. Brother Brian, would you stand up just a minute? And I'm not trying to. There's your pastor. You follow him as long as he's. Preaching the word of God. Amen. Thank you, brother. Preaching the word of God. He's going to preach that old good King James Bible too. Amen. And as long as he's preaching the word. If he's not preaching the word of God, don't follow. 
As long as he's preaching the word. He may be a nail in your hide to the wall, but if he's preaching the word. Amen. Thank God for that. So f then last day, free members. The Bible said they sold all their goods and gave it to the needy. They sold everything. They even sold the land. Sold everything. God hadn't yet told you to sell everything. He told you to give 10% of it to God. That's the reason this church is here. People's been giving church. Amen. Giving church. Now I know that. A giving church. A giving church. Thank God for that. This church, this church has been the counter church for 50 years. What I preach today, this church has been for 50 years. I believe. It's had the right ministry. It's had the right man of God. And it's had the right members. And that's why God's used it. Don't let it die. Don't let it stop. Just keep on. Keep it on. And one of these days, church. That moment in the twinkle eye y'all sung about a while ago. We're going to be changed. You know what? And we hear God, Brother Brian, say, well done. Well done. You've been faithful over a few things. Thank God. I want to be faithful, don't you? I love this church. Matter of fact, I love all churches. And all men of God that stands for the truth. And I love them that don't. I pray for them. That God save them or do something in their life. Let's pray and ask God just to keep this church going on until Christ comes. Amen. Christ comes. You do have a good inheritance here. Amen. Just keep it going on. Don't give up. The devil says there's no need. There is a need. Amen. There is a need. So we stand this morning. Thank God and to come to the song. You hear lost today, it'd be a good time. You say, I know the message ain't been around the lost, but it don't have to be around the lost. God can still saved. I've seen I've seen preachers preach on giving and people get saved. It's God working. But God moving. Aren't you glad that you're part of this work? And you know, let me let me make sure that you know this today. I count it a real honor to stand right here where I'm standing today. Because I love this church. love these people. And I appreciate you. And there's not a week goes by I don't pray for you. It's where it got to use you. Number 308. All to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily.